Um, I want to do a quick video on why um, Hyper-V in its current form um, isn't really all that good. Um, so let's see here, let's connect. Well, first of all, let's stop with that. So first of all, the issue with Hyper-V is that you have Generation 1 and 2. And the flaw with this is um, apparently Generation 2 is faster. However, it's only UEFI based. Which, um, and the problem with Generation 1 is um, because it's um, BIOS based, there's only um, a few supported operating systems with Hyper-V, and that is um, Windows 7, Windows 8, and 8.1, 10, and 11. So basically, Generation 1 is only really useful for Windows 7. Yes, Hyper-V doesn't even support Windows XP or Vista. <clears throat> So that is um, really a questionable move, and I'm going to talk about um, more Hyper-V support as well. It does support Linux, however, most Linux distributions these days have um, UEFI, so that's very questionable. Oh, Microsoft's decision to only support Windows 7. So if we go under Quick Create here, you'll be able to see um, all of the, well, not all of it. You can see that it supports Ubuntu-based distributions, and and the and what I understand is um, this downloads, but you cannot install locally. I mean, what I mean is you cannot download the thing locally. Download the template locally, and clone it. You can clone the VM, but not cr download the template, which is um, another questionable choice. So you're going to basically have to download pretty large files up to. Um, to 20 gigabytes. Anyways, let's connect. Just continue, we'll be fine. So I have a Windows 8 virtual machine, and I'm going to say why, um, even for um, supported operating systems, Hyper-V isn't all that good. The first problem is um, performance. And while that's booting up, why am I using Hyper-V, you might ask? And that's, and that's because um, that's because Windows term. Well, I guess that isn't installed anymore. It's because it's because of WSL, so I don't have that much of a choice because Hyper-V will run regardless. Hyper-V will run regardless if you use WSL or just Hyper-V itself. So Windows eight. The next problem is now let's see here is because it changes how the operating system works and that's because it's through a baffling stu oh my god it's because through a baffling stupid decision which is um well I'll show you go away god this is why nobody likes Microsoft Edge even still it was good in its beta but then Microsoft as usual ran into the ground And what's really stupid is that Hyper-V integration components, aka the drivers, are distributed <laughs> through a Windows update. And this thing gets even more stupid because let's just download, I mean, I already installed the Windows 8 driver, but while that's downloading, it actually changes the behavior, like it disables animations and stuff, which I mean, this is, Hyper-V is made for the cloud. However, I heard even for the cloud, these things are a nightmare to administrate. And here's the... It, you only, it only gets distributed in a .cat file and not in a dem, .msu. So that means there's no installation by default. You have to you either have to run a dism command or like get something like Winera Tweaker to get the um, get the option to appear in the context menu. So that is really bafflingly stupid. And as you can see, the performance isn't all that great. Oh, this is Windows 8.1. I have Windows. I have Windows 8 on a on VMware. So that is really dumb. And the options are limited, as you saw. I mean, you can't even manage.
can't even manage settings. You have to go back all the way in here and then you have to go into settings. And you don't get all that many options either. You get TPM, SCSI, controller, <coughs> network switch. I mean, some, if you have support, if you have a supported graphics card, you do get a pretty cool feature of um, virtualized um, GPU allocation, but my card doesn't support it. And I, that's honestly the only reason why I would see you would use um, Hyper-V, uh, unless if you're kind of forced to use Hyper-V with WSL. I mean, you would probably want to use um, VirtualBox, even though Oracle has been kind of running that into the ground. So yeah, that's kind of why um, Hyper-V is pretty dumb. It doesn't contain a lot of options. It's a nightmare to administrate. It's um, very limited operating system support. Drive, drivers are distributed through Windows Update through a .cat file rather than a .msu. It's like, what are they thinking? Have they, I mean, apparently Hyper-V is somewhat good, but I don't think the performance is all that good for me either.